Okay. So first of all, the uh, let me let me say a few words about this round table because it was an idea of mine. So formally speaking, this is part of our autumn school in educational technology. And you actually see some of our students, uh, autumn school students or autumn school participants, Julius from Peru, Yekaterina from Russia, <coughs> Hertje from Amsterdam, uh, the Netherlands. Then we have Alban, originally from Albania, but you are in Kuwait, right? Right, I'm based in Kuwait. Yeah, then Nina from Georgia, right, Nina? Yes, Nina. I'm from Georgia. And Inga from Germany, more specifically Göttingen. Uh, I remember Göttingen because it's a place that I would like to visit. Hello, Inga. Thank you for turning on your webcam. Uh, the idea for this uh, roundtable was essentially to invite three uh, teachers working in Estonia. And the reason is that usually foreigners think that uh, uh, teachers working in Estonia are super teachers. And, uh, and so I thought, let's see if it's true that uh, Estonian teachers, sorry, teachers working in Estonia. And you will get to know why I'm saying teachers working in Estonia. Let's see if they are super. And, uh, and, uh, and so I thought to have a round table, which is another way to say that we're going to have a conversation. So uh, whenever you want to ask a question or just jump in, uh, feel free. Uh, but I have prepared a few questions, which I dutifully shared with the, with the, the round uh, tablers. How, how do you call the, the people that participate in the round tables, like round tablers, no? Knights, knights. Knights, knights, yeah. yeah, our knights. So, so, let me, so let me introduce them. One is Ashley Wallace, who is not Estonian, is from the US, she's American, but she's been living in Estonia for quite a few years. And she's working in, in, uh, in Tallinn. Then we have Trino Pihus, who is also our master student, but, on this occasion, she's here because she's a teacher uh, here in Tartu, Mina Herma Gymnasium. Uh, Ashley is teaching, let me think, let me see if I remember correctly, not Tallinn International School, but the school, the International School of Tallinn. No, that's not correct. What's, what's the name? International School of Estonia. Okay, International School of Estonia. So International School of Estonia, yes. I don't know why Tallinn. There is then, an international school of Tallinn. Yeah, but it's an international <laughs> school, yes. And it's located in Tallinn. It is, yes. Okay. We've got yeah, okay. And then the third one is Elokai Kurela, who is a math teacher and uh, educational technologist. Are you still educational technologist? Yes, okay. Here in yes, Tartu, me. here in Tartu at the international, uh, at Tartu International School. This time it's correct. Tartu International School, which is a lovely yeah. school that we have here in Tartu. So uh, I actually made this brief introduction, but perhaps, uh, no, perhaps you could actually introduce yourself a little bit more, okay? Because I didn't say, for example, what Ashley teaches. So let's start with a brief introduction, Ashley. So you're, you're working in Tallinn at the International School of Estonia. Yes. And what do you teach? Uh, I'm a math teacher as well. Mm -hmm. um, I teach grades 10, 11, 12, uh, and actually this is my first year as the upper school principal as well. So I've, yeah, been so there was promoted and I'm a couple months into the job. Okay, good. How about you, Trino? Yeah, hello from my side as well. Um, uh, I have quite a number of responsibilities. Mainly I have been working as a primary teacher uh, at Mina Harma Gymnasium. Then uh, for the past 10 years, I have been the international program coordinator. And just recently, a few months ago, I took up the full responsibilities of the educational technologist at our school. Yeah. So doing a lot of different things. And that's why, that's why I invited you here. I mean, I invited you because you're a great teacher, great historian teacher, but also because there is a strong connection with the educational technology. Thank you. Thank you, Trino. How about you, Elokai? 
So you already said the most. So I work as a math teacher and educational technologist. I graduated in 2018, Emanuela's uh, course also, master's. Uh, so we, our, our, course, uh, our group was the pioneers. So we were the first ones. And many, many, I mean, already a long time ago, because hey, look, I graduated in 2018, so pre COVID era, the pre COVID yeah. era. Yes, and it was the first cohort. So, oh, I mean, all of them are former or current master students. So, you got it. Okay. So, so, and, and you're still an educational technologist, right? Formally, formally speaking. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's start then with the first question. Uh, feel free to use the chat, which I'm going to open now. So if there are any question or any observation that you would like to share, you can raise your finger, raise your hand, or write uh, whatever you would like to share in the chat. Okay, I will, once in a while, I will look at the chat. So let's start from the first question huh? or the first issue. Uh, originally, what I shared with you, Trinu Ashley and Elokai, was uh, mm, to tell us something about uh, your uh, the role that educational technology has in your own teaching practice. But I changed my mind now. I changed my mind. Sorry, but but the question would not be anyway challenging. So I just I just tell you I I just tell you a very short story, and then I come to the question. So I was uh, two weeks ago. I was in Austria in Graz, Graz. Graz, 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 uh, not far from the Italian border. And uh, this was actually a project um, with two, uh, two other universities and we're going to have a meeting in Tartu. And once, uh, and, and, uh, and these colleagues who are from Austria and Germany um, are really looking forward to coming to Estonia because Estonia is considered like a, uh, a place where technology is everywhere and teachers are super teachers. So my first question is, do you, do you think that you are a super teacher when it comes to the use of technology? Yes, no, or you can, you can give me your own point of view on this. Ashley, do you think that there is something special? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, actually, sorry, sorry about this. But do you think that there is anything special in Estonia in comparison with other with other countries when it comes to the use of educational technology? That's a different question than the first one you asked. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I, honestly, I would not say that I think I'm a super teacher when it comes to technology. Uh, I'll be honest, some of my colleagues kind of, um, kind of pick on me a little bit when I have to ask a tech question because they're like, oh, you have this master's. And so I constantly have to explain that it's not about, you know, sort of the hardware or, or how a thing actually works. It's more of how you use that tool uh, to improve the teaching and learning. Um, and so in that sense, I would say maybe, uh, I, I'm definitely open-minded. I'm constantly looking for new tools, um, seeing what actually works uh, with the students, what doesn't work, kind of evaluating. So um, in that sense, I'd say I'm much more open some of my colleagues. So, mm -hmm. I'll so you're not. Your <laughs> so yeah. So 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 you said that you're not an IT, but uh, you 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 play with technology. Yeah. Okay, but let's let's then ask Trino because she's Estonian and so she might have seen other schools around the globe. Hopefully. So you, how about not what, very many. Not, not that many, but do you think that there is anything special about Estonia when it comes to educational technology? Now, seriously, of course. Do uh, you think that we are more ahead uh, because of the equipment, because of the autonomy that we give to teachers? I think uh, the fact that teachers have very great autonomy in Estonia is one thing, because uh, uh, the teachers in Estonia are not controlled by the ministry even not so much by the local government and, and the schools are uh, having a lot of autonomy. Uh, I think this is great uh, compared to maybe some other uh, regions or countries. The other thing that I think plays to our advantage is the access to internet. 
basically uh, uh, when one may uh, make it as a joke, uh, they say that uh, 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 internet connection is considered to be a human right in Estonia. <laughs> but because when I have I, I have been visiting some other countries or on workshops or, or or different things then or conferences, then access to free and public internet is is not as natural in even some Euro European countries. So maybe this plays into our advantage. And, uh, and the other fact that, that we had been isolated for so long time during the Soviet times, and when finally everything opened up, then, uh, then I think Estonians were very eager to uh, getting anything new, anything valuable, absorbing the, the possibilities that, that, that were there. And maybe that is why uh, we maybe uh, did a very uh, fast progress in the technological area as well. Yeah, because technology was uh, was a way to show to the world uh, that that you were eager to develop uh, and then that you were up to the all other Western countries, at least in Europe or the yeah, Western and we world. And we wanted to be a part of that group. Not and you were, group. and and you wanted to be part of that group. So autonomy and in terms of equipment, is it true that? Uh, that, that you can get uh, your hands on whatever technology you want? That depends on the school budget, I think. The school uh, when, budget. when you are a, a, a local uh, governmental school, uh, then the government and the local uh, city government regulates your budget. So then maybe the possibilities are not so uh, wide open, but we do have uh, a lot of different projects available, support programs that support the, the, uh, the development of the IT equipment at school. So for example, our school has received uh, laptops, uh, reconstruction of our internet, the infrastructure, everything from the governmental level. So I think the government works a lot uh, to support uh, the development of the technological side of schools. So, so yeah, in that sense, yeah, maybe we are ahead of some other countries. Mm -hmm. So they, they mm -hmm. acknowledge that the need to develop the technological side of mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I also have a question about COVID, uh, and, uh, but uh, I, will, I will keep it for later. Thank you, Trino. How about you, Elokai? So Elokai has, uh, I mean, she's working. Let me just give you this uh, introduction, Elokai. Yes, please. She, she works in a set, in a, in a almost a utopian school, uh, <laughs> which, which used to be a hotel, right? But then it was repurposed. So now it looks like a school. It's on a small hill. We can call it hill, more or less. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I remember, because I visited the school many times, you have laptops, uh, you have projectors in every room. Uh, uh, it's also a small scale school, because I think that, okay, now, now you have many more students, but uh, I remember that when I visited, you had something like 40 students. Now it's much more, I guess. Twice Around as many. 70. Ah, mm -hmm. 70. So, so you have grown, but hopefully you mm -hmm. still have this homely feeling. Yeah. So, but how about you? I mean, what is your experience? Because you work in a, Trino is working in an Estonian school, right? Although actually the language, the, the language of instruction is English, right? No, no we are no. working in an Estonian school with okay. some of the students being international. So we have two languages of instruction. Okay, the main languages. language of instruction is uh, Estonian and then some students study in English. Okay, some students, uh, whereas in your case, Elokai, it's uh, the, the it's it's English, English and also Finnish, but Finnish is for the kindergarten. Uh, no, we are, we are working together with the English uh, uh, with the Finnish school. Finnish school. So we have yes. yes, we have Finnish students also, but they study in international school and they have an extra some lessons from mm -hmm. uh, Finnish uh, curriculum, okay, like but... Finnish language and. In Finnish. Mm -hmm. But but the language of instruction for everybody else is English. English. Right? English. Yes. Okay. And for them okay. also actually. Sorry? For Finnish students, it's for also Finnish English. Also. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and I expect that uh, you would have also foreigners, uh, I mean uh, the foreign teachers coming. Yes, we have. Okay. And what what is their what is their opinion? I mean, do you what what is their opinion about Estonia? And then we can also I can also ask your opinion, whether you feel that as an Estonian teacher, you are in a privileged position. 
have you ever have you ever asked them I, uh, actually i have not addressed this question towards the technology mm -hmm. before but i see what i noticed that they actually learn a lot with us mm -hmm. but this is i would say this is with most of the teachers who come to work with us that mm -hmm. uh, you have to you have to learn how it goes also if they're estonians Mm -hmm. uh, many many things are new like in one school some things are done in one way some things are done in another way uh, but what the feedback that we get from the parents is is this that uh, uh, the parents yes uh, yeah from the parents is this that uh, it's uh, like for example our study information system that we are using studium that it's really clear it's really understandable that for example in our home country we didn't have anything like that and uh, and also the feedback about this um, distance learning has been really good from the parents so so there must be something <laughs> there must be something there must be mm -hmm. something so do you feel do you feel privileged then i mean also because of your school because it's not just about estonia but it's also about the context uh, in which you I work see to work there I, I feel really privileged it's uh, mm -hmm. really nice uh, because we can have really like I can concentrate on each student I mm -hmm. can get to know them if we don't have many students we have 10 11 students in a class maximum so this is really something that uh, I like and uh, from uh, from the fifth grade on we allocate from the school the laptops to each student to use so this is also something uh, that really helps actually this um, uh, technolo uh, technological side. Uh, in some schools, for example, in Terra, Tartu, they uh, give the iPads to students uh, mm -hmm. from the first grade. But our experience is that uh, laptops are better tools for working. So the, the, the tablets can support, but uh, uh, the laptop is a tool for working. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what I what, I, what my thoughts were uh, about this uh, super teacher, teachers in Estonia, where it come, where, where this uh, uh, thought may come from, is that actually it is really promoted from higher levels from the ministry in Estonia and, and from very long time ago already when we started with, with this Tiger League. So all the schools got connected to the internet and they got. Uh, 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 equipment, uh, computers. Uh, so this is. Uh, I think this is this. Um, uh, well, this made um, Estonians think of themselves as very techy people. So they 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 can. They are not afraid of the computers. So I think, and this is what then. It's. I don't think that uh, our students are very very good uh, computer users or something like that. But I think that. Um, it's somehow there is this confidence uh, in in Estonians that we we can do it well, and if you have this confidence, then actually you you kind of it it uh, leads you ahead. And uh, what else? The autonomy uh, is very important part, but also support uh, for the teachers. So and uh, we have a lot of free trainings. Uh, we can uh, uh, so. If there is a new tool coming out, there is probably soon a training that uh, the teachers can attend. It, this is very, very important. Uh, so, and uh, also that you can actually test different things and you can, uh, uh, you get all the time this information that come, come and learn, come and learn. I think this is something that, they, that uh, is, is a, uh, like helping the teachers yeah. to be yeah yeah and this this will be actually the say the the next question uh about the support but before coming there i would like to go back to ashley so you actually came i mean you're not estonia so what was your first impression when you started teaching in an estonian school did you have the feeling that it was it was something completely different from what you were used to or in terms, in terms, of course, of technology and use of technology, let's put it this way. And also autonomy, since autonomy was also mentioned as one of the key ingredients. Um, I mean, honestly, when I first started, it was, it was a culture shock. <laughs> um, it was, um, 
So it, that was in 2012. And I sort of fell, I almost fell into the job. They were advertising for a math teacher. I didn't expect that they would want an English speaking math teacher, but I put my uh, CV in anyways. Um, and then they, they weren't looking for an English speaking math teacher, but they, it, this was at the Tallinn English College and they teach the IB as well. And so they sort of re uh, shuffled their staff to, to take me on. Um, so it was, it, you know, um, I mean, those first few years were tough. All of the staff meetings were in Estonian. So I felt like I was kind of missing out a lot. Um, but in recent years, I've seen an, a, a huge change. Uh, I'm still actually connected with the Tallinn English College and now they have a technologist who um, is sending out support mails all the time. They have um, a couple sets, I think, of class laptops that move around. They've got a computer room that, that can be reserved. So it's, it's a whole lot different than it used to be. Yes. So uh, speaking of which, maybe we can start approaching the main issue, which is uh, uh, how, how this support is structured when it comes to the, the use of technology in education, because Elokai already mentioned it, and now Ashley is mentioning this uh, sort of uh, um, magic word, at least in Estonia, I would say, which is that of uh, educational technologist. Now, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking our autumn school participants, uh, do you know who or what uh, the educational technologist is? Have you ever heard of this term, educational technologist? Well, I, I haven't. You haven't? So no, in the I just Netherlands... know teachers who like to do technical stuff. Okay. But that's about it. <laughs> okay, that's about it. That's yeah. about it. Well, you're not actually so far from the truth, but anyway. How about in Germany, Inga? Have you have you ever heard about this term educational technologist? I mean, in your own language, not uh, not uh, not in English. Okay, mm, basically, no. Lem No, Inga. <laughs> no, I have not either. Okay, this is actually an interesting story because uh, Elokai was uh, mentioning this uh, uh, program called the uh, Tiger Leap, which I think goes back to 2004, which is basically when the whole thing about educational technology started in Estonia. And I think that one uh, crucial thing that uh, at the policy level Estonia addressed was the fact that, uh, yes, if you want to have teachers integrate uh, digital technologies into their own teaching practice, uh, they need support, right? And this support may come in the form of a person, okay? In the form of a person supporting teachers and educators in the school understand uh, how, to, how to exploit all the potential that digital technologies can have for learning and teaching. And the word that was used to refer to this particular person or to this role, uh, in the school is educational technologist, okay? Educational technologist. In a way, I mean, we have, as you know, a master's program in educational technology, and uh, I've been using this term uh, uh, to refer to the fact that uh, at the end of this master's program, you will become uh, one of those. You will become an educational technologist, which means that in theory, uh, you understand what, uh, I mean, how to help uh, or how to support uh, teachers uh, when it comes to the use of digital technologies uh, in, their own, in their own teaching practice. Now, this is in theory, because actually, even when you go to an Estonian school and you ask, okay, but who is the educational technologist? What is it that the educational technologist does? You're not going to get one single answer, okay? Um, the reason is that very often the educational technology is somehow in between an IT guy and the teacher, okay? So, so yes, uh, I mean, the educational technology deals, the educational technologist deals with uh, technologies, ICT, okay? But at the same time, uh, he's not an IT specialist uh, and he or she is supposed to work with teachers. Interestingly enough, and in this room, I mean, on this Zoom room, we have two examples. Very often the educational technologist is actually a teacher. 
Uh, now, Ashley is not an educational technologist, right? But quite close, but quite close. But Elokai and Trino are educational technologists. Actually, with Elokai in particular, uh, we had this experience together because she was a student in our master's program. And as she said, I was her supervisor. She survived. So Iana, Pirio, you see, Tom, she was my supervisee and she's still there, beautiful and, uh, and everything, still alive. So, and, and with Elokai, we kept discussing for ages, for months, who, who or what is the educational technologist? Because Elokai, when we started four years ago, uh, told me something quite interesting about her own experience. Because she said that, yes, the school understood, her school understood the importance of having an educational technologist. But when it came to write uh, down in the contract what her duties were, I, re I actually remember Elokai telling me, well, we didn't know what to write down. Now, after four years, Elokai, and after, and after graduating uh, in, our, in our master's program, how would you answer to this question? What the educational technologist is? You can refer to your experience, uh, to your thoughts, uh, whatever. So what is your answer? Who the educational technologist is? So what I do in my school, so this is the support to my teachers. Uh, the, uh, how to use technology in teaching, basically. Of course, they come to me also with these questions that uh, why doesn't it print and things like that. So, so and they do, it, so they do. You still yeah. an IT guy, or oh, sorry, I, I can yeah. but my, my latest biggest uh, uh, challenge was this, that we got the new printer mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, uh, printer guys came and uh, they didn't ask anybody. They just uh, removed the old printer and uh, put the, the new one. And then nobody could print for a, like a couple of hours in the middle of the day in the school. It was very, very bad. So I had to deal with this. And I don't like this printer drivers and all these things. I, this, is not, this is not what I want to do. This is not your job, yes. Yes. But... Uh -huh. And, and uh, you said to me that uh, your school doesn't have an IT specialist. Uh, because we you buy are... it. Yes, we buy this uh, in you from buy, another yeah. company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Which actually, is... we have we have very good cooperation with this company. So actually, the problem was solved so that I called our IT man and said that can you come tomorrow, please, really quickly, and then it was solved. So so you're not dealing with the uh, with the with the with the equipment. Uh, but uh, I, I take care of this in that sense that uh, I, yes, well, I, I uh, like uh, keep account on the things. I uh, know where everything is and so on. And then I, I'm the like, uh, I'm the one who talks to this uh, IT, IT yeah. guy. IT. You, make, you make the phone calls when, yes. when, uh, when needed. Yeah. And what do you do as an educational technologist? So you mentioned that you organize workshops. Mm -hmm. And what... Then, then, can you can you say something a bit about uh, such workshops? So, for example, I introduce different tools to our teachers. Uh, then uh, uh, I teach them how to be safe in internet, how uh, whatever like uh, uh, rules, uh, like new rules about this uh, uh, data protection and so on data. and so on. Mm -hmm. so, so I am the one who first, like I learn it first and then I bring it to our staff. And uh, how long are these workshops that you organize? Is, is, is it like one day workshop or? Uh, no, usually or an hour. An hour? Yes, usually an hour. And, and how often do you do those? Uh, uh, on the, uh, every break usually. When we have the breaks, then it's uh, one hour lo uh, allocated. The school break, which, which happens every three months, something like yes. this? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and how else do you, do you support? Uh, your teachers, because I remember that when I visited your school, that you 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 were chased after by your by your. <laughs> so they, yes, is this still true? Me. Do they still uh, follow maybe, you? Maybe le yeah, less and less, but they they come because they uh, use actually technology quite a lot, and they want to use new things. They want to try out new things, and then um, they come and ask if something doesn't work. And what else I do is actually. Uh, 
like I sometimes I force our teachers to use some uh, new tools like online tools. So this is also something that I do because uh, you have forced them. Yeah, I forced them comes. to use some things. Yes. So, be, for example, there is one this math um, platform, Edutem Playground. It's Finnish, and uh, we were thinking that uh, we need something online if we need to go uh, on distance mm -hmm. learning again. Mm -hmm. So, and actually, well, probably we'll talk about this later when we talk about mm -hmm. distance learning. Yes. But then, uh, the, uh, uh, we don't want to use so much computers in the lessons anymore as previously before the pandemic. So now we just had to force the teachers that please, especially the teachers of the younger students that please do it now. That because we never know what happens, like the situation in Estonia wasn't so good like in, in a month mm -hmm. ago. And, and please uh, use now and be sure that your students know how to use computer and log in to their accounts and so on and so on. So sometimes you have to, yeah, nudge them or yes. really force them, nudge them. Like force, but, like, no, this time. I know, force them. them. Okay. <laughs> you, you really have to force them. Yes. One, one last question about this issue uh, from you, uh, this topic. You are a math teacher. Yes. But you are actually consulting or supporting all other teachers. Yeah. How do how do you do this? How can you how do you manage to 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 consult teachers from other subjects, teaching other subjects? Is I, it I is it that, easy? Uh, not always. I learn myself a lot actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I've said, I think in previous. Uh, roundtables also i've learned a lot from this facebook groups actually teachers mm -hmm. tech teachers and whatever and when i see something really interesting uh, then i pass it to the another teacher like english teacher or i don't know, physics teacher or something and we try to look at some things together or, or actually if the teacher is techy enough then it's enough if i just pass the information and he or she looks at this and uh, and if she likes this, then it starts to use. And if not, then maybe mm -hmm. some, some other time and so on and so on. And of course, if I see some trainings, I pass the information about teacher training also. Mm -hmm. So you are sort of hub, also information hub. Yeah, In yeah, case yeah. there is something interesting, you pass it on. Yes, yes. I, I'm a part of many different lists. So mm -hmm. I get the information, I read, so I make my selection. So not everybody has to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, as a math teacher, I imagine that you are experimenting with the, with with applications that are relevant for for your own teaching practice. But when it comes to other subjects like geography, how can you do that? But then you outsource. Yeah, mm -hmm. there is one example. For example, it was a reading app uh, like that was teaching students to read, and I saw this. I don't know somewhere. I saw it. And I passed this information to the teacher, who's uh, one of the students had uh, tr troubles learning to uh, read. And uh, she looked at this and started to re uh, use it and said that it was really, really good. So this was one small example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I understand. Yeah, because it would be very, very hard to cover all subjects, mm -hmm. even when you're willing to learn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, how to how to support okay i see that there is a uh, there is a comment uh, uh, in the chat but let it be for the time being tom in 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 2 minutes we will be back or maybe 3 or 4 minutes okay let it be there then trino how about you because i know i know a lot about elokai or 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 i used to know about her own practice as an education technologist but how about you because you are a teacher just like elokai what do you do? So Elokai was mentioning workshops, one-to-one, -one, private consultation, sometimes passing information on to your colleagues. What what do you do? What do you do? So yeah, I am not so much of a teacher anymore this year uh, okay. because I gave up that part of my responsibilities because you can do only that much in 24 hours. Uh, really? But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my colleagues don't believe me, but yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but uh, I have been a primary teacher for quite a number of years. And, uh, but regarding the role of the educational technologist, um, I think uh, uh, educational technologist is kind of like assistant of the IT specialist. 
as the IT specialist uh, would be responsible from the for the hardware so that all the wires are plugged in, all the laptops are in the charging docks, uh, the network is working, uh, then um, the accounts are set up, for example, for the whole school. So this could be the responsibility of the uh, of the IT specialist. Uh, but the educational technologist, just like Eloka, I said, uh, works very closely with the IT department and the responsibilities are to support teachers uh, with the use of uh, technological uh, either gadgets or programs or platforms or different tools. Uh, and the educational technologist's um, main responsibility, in my opinion, would be the, to do the job that the teachers don't have the time to, to go through different options that are available, because more and more great thing, things are invented, are produced, are developed, but the, the teacher who is teaching 20, 25 hours uh, a week, plus all the other responsibilities, doesn't have the time to go through every single thing. So the educational technologist has to be the one uh, to uh, look, try out and see if this would be something that works for the teachers and then uh, suggest uh, the tool to be used or uh, conduct the workshop uh, to practice this. So like the same as Elok, I, my responsibility is to uh, keep myself uh, informed about uh, possibilities. Uh, support the teachers with uh, either uh, a group uh, workshops. We also use holidays, uh, school holidays a lot for different group workshops, for example, Google Classroom or different tools that you can use within that. And uh, then individual face-to-face -face consultations because uh, some of the teachers are more interested in uh, extending their understanding and practicing more different things. So they come with uh, the great ideas. Okay, I would like to do this kind of things. How could I make it happen with technology? So then together we uh, find out, learn, uh, things like that. Or uh, then the other uh, side of the spectrum would be teachers who are not very confident in using technology and uh, may need the nudging that, oh yes, you can do it. So last week, for example, I, um, I uh, was asked by my colleague, uh, they, uh, we have, we are, have uh, smart boards in uh, not all of the classrooms, but a lot of the classrooms. And, and she actually had, had the smart board in the classroom for, I don't know, four or five years already. Uh, but never uh, took the time to see what is it actually that I can do with this, aside from projecting my computer picture on the screen. So he, she invited me into her classroom when it was uh, vacant and we explored the smart board together. I showed her what she could do with this uh, when the students were inside the classroom together with her, as well as when some of the students or all students would be... Uh, at home at their own computers. So how can you project the thing, for example, that, that the classroom sees also to the student at home at the same time? So basically, uh, yeah, trying out different things. So some teachers need the extra nudging because they're not so confident. And it actually doesn't depend on the age of the teacher. We can't say that uh, uh, older teachers are more reluctant in using technology and younger teachers are uh, maybe more confident. No, it's not that. It's the state of mind that the teachers have. And, and I think the educational technologist's uh, main responsibility or main value would be to making the teachers feel that, yes, I can do it. Yes, I can use technology, and yes, this is beneficial to my work. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. that's why. It's very clear, and I and I and I really found uh, interesting what you said before. The the educational technologist uh, talks with the IT guy, but at the same time, he or she is basically a teacher, but with the time to try out uh, and uh, and then suggest uh, these or that tool. Which is actually, actually, this is what you do, what what you actually did uh, during the your during your studies, because uh, you know the reason why I invited you here because it w was that you are a teacher who 
for a certain amount of time worked as a sort of educational technologist because you helped uh, another colleague of yours uh, actually during the pandemic because it was it was already yeah, yeah in, it was. in the in we the in the very last adjust. So, so how did you find yourself uh, as uh, as i mean would you say that you were acting like an educational technologist in spite of the fact that that wasn't your formal role mm -hmm. and and how did you how did you feel yes i mean that's really what i did is i kind of took on that role um, and i would agree with basically everything trina said that you 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 have to show the other teachers that they can be successful with this. You have to uh, help them to realize that it's beneficial, that it might be a little bit of work in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it is something that is going to be beneficial for a teacher and student. Um, and yeah, I, I, what I find works the most for me is when I've kind of tinkered with the tool. I've been in there figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Um, and then I start to show everyone hey, look what I found out. Guess what I can do with this thing? And when I'm excited about it and, and very comfortable with it, um, other people are like, oh, maybe you can show me how it is. And then they just start asking questions. Um, and in, in that process, Elokai mentioned earlier that like we start to learn things because we've been asked the right question. It's like, oh, you know, I don't know how to do that. Let's figure it out together. Um, and that was one thing I kind of wanted to say too is, when I started this journey of, uh, you know, the masters, I didn't feel like I understood or knew what to do with technology. I always felt like everyone is so much smarter, everyone is so much more efficient, um, and I sort of realized that we're all learning. <laughs> uh, there is nobody who is knows everything and, and is amazing with everything. It, it's really that mindset to. Um, you know, to be open to try new things and to, to be reflective that yes, this will work or, or no, this won't work. Um, but yeah, so that's really what I did is I found a tool that I liked myself uh, and, and was really useful. And it's one of my colleagues who really didn't have a lot of experience with um, technology. Um, I showed him pretty much right before we went on the distance learning. And then during distance, we had Zoom meetings where I was trying to show him how to use it. Uh, from a distance and, and it was tough because I knew it would be that much easier to show him if I was there. So I had to ask, you know, the right question to, to get him. He wasn't even looking in the right spots. And it was like, so, okay, what are you seeing? All right, show me how, you know, can you share your screen? Um, so it was very frustrating. Um, but, you know, we got there and it was, it, I learned a lot through the process. Um, you learn a lot by helping other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I think that also what Trinu said, uh, that sometimes the best questions were coming from or, or are coming from the teachers themselves. And this is actually, I mean, I feel that it's a process of co-learning. Co the only difference, and I agree with Trino, you need time. I mean, you, you need resources. Then, then time is, is one big resource. Money is another one. People, people is another good, uh, good, uh, good resource that we have, and that's why we need an educational technology, and an educational technologist to 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 help teachers. There was a there was a thank you Ashley. There was a there was a conversation going on in the chat. Tom, would you like to say something about your comment before we move on to the next question, which is about COVID? Yeah, it was almost rhetorical, I think. Um, because I, those of us who work with, I suppose, a number of teachers know the experience of encouraging. There are, I, I think, two categories of, of teachers. There are those who have had the St. Paul conversion and they have, um, I suppose, a, an ability to just take technology, see what the potential is and imagine. And then there are those who, and I, I think, various different people have mentioned the fact of confidence or personality or the fear of being on the stage in front of students not knowing what they're doing that holds them back perhaps and a nudge doesn't move them over that over that threshold it takes something more it takes journeying with them it takes building up their confidence and supporting them in doing it um and I suppose in our context, it's particularly pertinent because I, I just have a huge big paper document that landed on my desk today 
in terms of the revision of teaching standards for primary educators in Ireland, uh, which comes into effect from next year. Um, and I suppose a lot of what's being said here is relevant because I work with the teacher educators, the people who train and form the teachers that will go on to work in the schools. And if I have a challenge in that space, what is the experience like for those who are the learners, who are the, the initiators or the, the new students, the students going into teaching? You were mentioning confidence. Confidence? And, and, and I, think that, I think that confidence, I mean, confidence is also something that is built uh, interpersonally. Because I think that what, what, what I mean, Eloka's point was uh, uh, her colleagues uh, can have a person helping them. Yes. Building their yeah. confidence. Confidence mm -hmm. is not just something coming from above, yeah. falling, falling I, upon you like I, grace. I think actually what Ash Ashley was saying there tied it well together for me um, in, in the early part of her comments there was that, and, and you mentioned it too, was, that sometimes the best learning here comes from the journeying together from people mm -hmm. fr from yes me having the time to tinker but then me working with a teacher who asks questions that i haven't imagined because they're bringing their practical experience or mm -hmm. they're beginning to develop their imagination and once they start imagining they begin to develop their own sense of confidence and i think that imagination is is critical to confidence building yeah, I agree. I and agree. it's important to my, my training too. Yeah, because yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not here as an expert in reality, or I've come to the conclusion over the years that I'm no longer an expert. Mm -hmm. I only learn in the process. Yeah, you are, yeah you're willing to learn. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that, that's also what Trino mentioned before. Yeah. I think that uh, we're all here to learn somehow. Speaking of which, how about COVID? Uh, I want to start from Elokai. Because we haven't, uh, I haven't had the chance to discuss with you about COVID, uh, because mm -hmm. our, I mean, our exchanges uh, go back to I think uh, 2018. I mean, the last exchanges that we had. How about COVID? Because in Estonia, let me just mention this as a sort of background. In Estonia, I read uh, a month ago that uh, the ministry did not want to have any kind of online uh, learning. Uh, so, so the headline was, we try to keep uh, the schools open as long as possible, which mm -hmm. came as a surprise to me because I thought we are Estonia, you know, so learning can be e-learning. But uh, so, so what was your experience, Elokai, in your, in your school? Now we're talking about your school, so yes. first-hand experience. Mm -hmm. So our school has been on distance learning only on these two spring months or these two years in spring when it was uh, all in Estonia. Mm -hmm. So we have been so lucky we could have, uh, we could keep the school open for the rest of the times. And actually what we learned from this is that um, e-learning is beautiful, but if it's too long, if it's two months, then for some students, it, they, they disappear, mm -hmm. they, they are gone, they don't learn anything. And, uh, and it uh, also, of course, these uh, mental health problems and the social problems that uh, come, uh, arise also. So uh, it, it shouldn't be too long. I, 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 was, I felt so bad for the, some students in US who were on distance mm -hmm. learning for one year or more, and also for the teachers. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I think some students didn't just learn for one year mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. So if it's organized, like, I don't know, maybe one week maximum, <laughs> or, or one day per week, uh, or, or a couple of days per week, then I think it works. And for adults, of course. But if we talk about basic school students or this uh, 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 primary school no, basic school is the, until 16 years old in Estonia, I'm talking about then uh, I think they need the, the personal contact with the teacher. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is really, really relevant for them. And uh, we also have decided in our school that we keep it open as much as possible. We do some uh, like e-learning days. So we, know how, uh, so we know that our students and the teachers 
can do it when it's needed again, like it was. Uh, but this uh, personal personal touch and this ac actually to see and be together with the people, this is it's very very important for the students, for the children. And what 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 interesting also uh, we noticed and this what I noticed with my with myself teaching uh, is that uh, I use much less technology in the lessons now that I used before the uh, pandemic. Because why now, so? Why so? Uh, so the, because now the students actually use much more technology than before. Okay. Many of them are addicted to the screens. So now I can like reduce the screen time in the lesson when I don't uh, uh, ask them to use technology. Of course, sometimes we do, but it's much, much less than it used to be before. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, the students, uh, not all the students, but many students uh, got to use to, so, so to say, multitask mm -hmm. in, during the lesson time. So basically they think that they are learning when actually they're, I don't know, some other programs are running behind and they do something else while, uh, while the teacher doesn't see or, or even if I, I look, they sometimes they don't care. So they, if I ask you close. So they, they, developed, they developed this habit of multitasking which because is of not, the pandemic and then, yes. and then they carried over yeah. to, yeah. Because I think uh, for us, many, many students actually during the lesson, the lesson was going on, the teacher was talking or whatever was going on there, but they had a, a game open or a video open or some, they were doing some other things and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it became a habit for them. And uh, it's, it's very sad that it happened. It's, it's, um, mm -hmm. I think it, it's actually, it, because it was uh, too much of it. Too much too, of it, yeah. Too much, two months in a row, or two and a half months in a row of this uh, distance learning is, I, I think it um, was not good. Mm -hmm. I understand, I understand. And, it, and also I have talked to other teachers in our school, so most of the teachers say that, that they feel that they don't want this distance learning anymore, and they feel that they uh, use a little bit less technology in the lessons than before. They they now evaluate this hand hand and eye. Hands on activities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. with your crafting something, yeah. whatever. Yeah, and yeah, this... I, I even, uh, for example, before when uh, I let the students to look at some exercises from the screen and copy them into the notebooks. Now I print them out. Like I, I even don't let them to open the, any device. I just give them a printout. Yeah. Um, so it's a form of de de detox uh, or however yeah. you call it. Mm -hmm. they, they, they got some kind of digital overdose and now it's time to revert all these effects. Yeah. Yeah, this is very interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Ashley, how about you? Did you did you change? Did you did you change something because of COVID or how would you yeah, react to Eloka's um, observations? We have the same we we only closed the entire school during those two months. Uh, but since then we've had a couple of times where we had uh, you know one of the students was sick, so we had to quarantine the class. So we sent home a class for a week or something. Um, I'm still using it though. They, like my daughter's actually had COVID a couple of weeks ago. So I was teaching lessons from home. Um, our school agreed that it was better to have me at home teaching the students who were in school um, digitally or, or virtually than to have a sub come and just kind of, you know, sit there with them and do worksheets or something. So um, there's times when I'm, you know, I've led from home, the students are here, it's, it's weird. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, there's times where I've got students who are close contact or they're actually sick where I'm actually doing a hybrid so they feel fine um, I've got kids in front of me while I'm uh, projecting and using the Google Meet uh, to uh, share whatever materials we're going with um, you know I never used to um, like I give assignments now on, on Google like a Google Doc um, and the kids will make coffee and so I think we're still using it um, maybe not more, maybe not less. Um, but yeah, it's, I find I have to be more selective about which tool do I need for this moment, for this task um, that'll work for them and me. 
Um, mm -hmm. So I think my, my toolbox maybe is bigger than it used to be, um, but then I don't get to go maybe as deep as I would like with some of the tools. So. Mm -hmm. And you've become more selective when it comes to, to, to the tool to use. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the needs of the day or the week or the, yeah. or the unit even. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Trino, how about you? How would you react to what, what Ashley and Elokai shared? Yeah, I actually quite uh, connect with them because our school uh, also practiced the principle that uh, we will send our schools only when we are told to. Uh, so I know that a lot of the schools in Tartu uh, last year, uh, they began the year with uh, dividing the students. So some are at home, some are at school without any particular orders or reasons to just to be safe. And, uh, and our, we kept ours, uh, our school open until the government says now all these uh, great students go home or, or uh, we needed to uh, quarantine a class because there was a COVID case in the class. Uh, we can't say that there were more cases of or outbreaks of COVID in our school than in other schools of our region, that there was no difference in that regard. Uh, when we compare the schools that did the distributing of the students uh, quite intensively. So I think our students were, uh, were also lucky to be going to school as much as possible. And the first spring, uh, of course, uh, 2020 was uh, hectic because it was uh, so new to everybody. We didn't have any system of uh, handling the distance learning. And, uh, and we were promised at first that this would be only for two weeks, which resulted in two months. Uh, approaching the summer holidays, which is also demotivating for students because it's soon going to be over. Why to bother? And um, and yeah. and uh, we actually, uh, with the management team, we uh, decided that we need to learn from that experience and worked really hard over the summer. And in autumn 2020, we approached the school year with actually a concrete plan of, for distance learning. So we decided that uh, so the, uh, that we needed to have a system. So what about the Tiger Leap uh, that Estonia is famous for? Uh, my personal feelings are that in 2014, when the Tiger Leap was introduced or somewhere around that, uh, the tiger took only small steps, crawled or walked. Not, it didn't leap. It wasn't a leap, yeah. It wasn't leaping until COVID hit us because then there was actual physical need to do something differently. And this actually, Tom, maybe answers your question of uh, forcing and nudging. There, for some of the teachers, the only thing that helps us when they are in desperate need of using the technology, then they take it up and then they uh, start understanding, oh, why didn't they use that before? So, so approaching the autumn 2020, we decided that everybody, uh, all the teachers will start using the same system we turned to Google with everything, uh, Google Meet, Google Classroom, all the other uh, apps that the Google has for learning. We taught the, or actually I did, <laughs> uh, the teachers uh, to use them effectively. And, uh, and also the students having all the access to the Google Classroom, uh, learning, teaching them how to use it. And, and for now, uh, we also have regular uh, e-learning days just to keep that skill going so uh, we don't uh, forget it, neither the teachers or the students. And, uh, and then um, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say that we use technology more or less uh, because of the distance learning time, but I do agree with Elokai that uh, juggling different things at the computer screen was really tempting to students when they were on distance learning. They, uh, there were students that uh, did extremely well, even thrived in distance learning because that was uh, supporting their needs, but uh, there were so about third and third and third, I think when we did the survey, a third of the students thrived in distance learning and would have continued forever. Then a third were really struggling or even fall, fell out of the picture. And we needed to work really hard with the support staff to get them back into the learning system. And then there was the third that said, oh, I don't mind either way. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But, uh, but most of them were happy when they were able to return back to school. And, and your comment about uh, Estonia being an e-country, why not e-learning country? Uh, yeah, when we want to uh, think only about academic progress, we, can, we could do it online uh, in distance learning, in e-learning, maybe we could. Uh, the smaller the children, the more challenging it is, but uh, only academic uh, results are not as important than the social interaction, the mental well-being, and this is what the distance learning lacks. Yeah, so- actually, yeah, yeah. Actually, mental uh, mental health, students' mental mental health was mentioned by by the ministry as one of the things yeah. uh, that uh, the sort of dropped down during these e-learning months months not the two weeks the promised two weeks but the months yeah so, sorry uh, i i interrupted you Trino. What, what were you saying i don't know <laughs> it was about mental health yeah so yeah in, the, in this sense yeah i think um, uh, we the, the shorter the time of the distance learning uh, at mm-hmm. once uh, mm-hmm. the better it is for the children they can manage they have mm-hmm. learned to manage it but uh, for most of us, uh, as human beings, we, we are a pack people. We like being with uh, other people around us. So uh, so do the children. And, and I think uh, that's where the Ministry of Education did an absolutely correct decision this autumn, keeping the schools open for as much as possible. And I hope we will succeed until the end of the year. Yeah, feeling, feeling bad for those countries that have been locked down for a year, year and a half, maybe even two years in a row. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> you can have the technology, but you still need the interaction between the others, the live interaction, not uh, like mm-hmm. we are doing right now. Yeah, but let, let me ask one last question, because I promised Ashley that uh, around six, uh, this is over. So, Ashley, if you have to go and, uh, and, and cook for your children, please do it. Uh, I would I would ask you to stay here for a few more minutes. Um, how about you, Trino? Because I mean, also Trino, Elokai, and Ashley uh, attended uh, this master's program, this master's program in educational technology, which is which used to be partly online, but uh, due to COVID, uh, has been only online. <laughs> At least for for uh, for Trino, this is this is the case. So how would you how would you compare your experience as as a student in an online master's program and your experience with distance learning as a teacher with much younger people <laughs> with children so how would you how would you compare it i cannot ask elokai and ashley because they had this uh, blended format whereas in your case trino it was totally online I mean, it is still. It is totally online. No, aside yeah. from the fact that we were able to gather in yeah, Kalma is, in uh, yeah, this is a August. <laughs> but we didn't but, have any any seminar. I mean, with me, for example, we never, we only, we only met on Zoom. Yeah. So I think, again, the same thing that I just uh, said before, when I think about myself as a learner, I am an adult, I have good self-regulation skills and good technological skills, and I can manage it well. So I think as our group is so fantastic, it doesn't even feel that we are online. Uh, and and uh, depending on the structure of the physical lecture that or the webinar, so there are some webinars like yours, for example, that are really interactive. And, and that's uh, where you don't feel uh, that, uh, you are doing it, uh, I don't know, in isolation or, or it's really difficult to be online. Mm-hmm. In other places where, for example, the webinar is only a lecture from uh, a professor, then you feel more demotivated because it's uh, difficult to follow a lecture that is uh, an hour and a half or two hours, for example. And, and in that sense, in, in these situations, I actually feel what probably the students the are students feeling. felt, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as a teacher, again, uh, maybe I'm not the best example because I, I can manage technology really well and I can juggle different things uh, when the students are partly in classroom, the other one is at home and, and I didn't have any trouble with this, but uh, a lot of my colleagues did. Being not able to di- divide their attention between the students in the classroom uh, and uh, the students at 
the home and not being very confident in using the technology to help everybody to be on board and, to, and everybody to be engaged. So in this sense, I think for the teachers, the period of hybrid learning, especially where some were allowed to come to school and the others had to stay at home. I think this was the most difficult, but everybody was at home, including the teacher. I think in this case, it, it was, was easier. much easier. Yeah, because but the when, hybrid, the hybrid is a little bit like a suicide, I would say. Isn't yeah, it? definitely. So it's a little bit like a suicide. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I, the younger the children, the more uh, responsibility the teacher has to uh, keep yeah. them uh, interacting live with the, what is going on on the screen or having them to communicate with one another. <clears throat> so that's why, for example, in our school, uh, well, last uh, spring uh, or this spring, yes, uh, 2021 spring, when we had to stay for a couple of months again or a month and a half. Then uh, we decided that uh, we, uh, we did a rule that the teacher ha at least had to begin and start the lesson, but the teacher was not made responsible of carrying on for 45 or maybe even 90 minutes when there was a double lesson because the ch children's attention span is too, too limited for that. So the teacher would introduce the uh, topic, introduce the assignment, give the students possibility to go, switch off the camera, switch off the meeting, go and do the thing on their own, on a paper, preferably, <laughs> or maybe even online, but without being uh, in the meeting. And the, But the teacher would stay there so the children could check back in when, when they had any problems. So you had supervision, you had support, but you didn't have to stay online from 8 a.m. in the morning until I don't know, 2 p.m. Uh, which would be which would be a killer. I mean, obviously. absolutely. It was killer for the yeah. teachers and it actually would have been a killer for the students. And we really got positive feedback uh, about that kind of approach from the parents mm -hmm. and from the mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You. This is a very interesting thing because we think that supervision means to be present with the webcam on, but that's not the case. I mean... Uh, I mean, even in a physical environment, it's not that you are attending your children, I mean, your students uh, all the time, every single second. That's not the case. Of course, being physically present has its own advantages in this regard. Thank you very much, Trino. For it, it was it was a very interesting. It was my own curiosity, because uh, because in the past, yes, students said that actually their experience was completely different because it was also, as students because it was designed. Uh, our master's program is actually designed as an online, basically an online master's program. So they 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 knew what to expect and so on and so forth. And then of course the age. Thank you. So it's six. Uh, 6 14 15 at least in estonia i think that uh, we can wrap up here unless uh, uh, there are questions from the audience so to say any question from the audience i see that you're using the chat which i still don't understand why it's so it's so <laughs> i don't like the chat let me let me put it this way because i'm actually listening and then there are people developing very long conversations with very long comments, uh, which I cannot follow. But uh, but that's okay. But that's okay. That's okay. Any any question, or we can wrap up here. Ian, are you okay? Fine, thanks. <laughs> okay, yeah, you look you look nicer. You look nicer on Zoom than on special chat. Oh really? Okay. Or maybe <laughs> because it's dark now. Maybe it's, okay. dark, it's it's dark now. Okay, but uh, any 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 question? Okay, can I ask? Can I ask something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, Ban, please. Which, which I think is is a minor. Some 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 specifics mentioned with the story of Elokai. I think. By the way, thank you for sharing the story. So it was about the the critical question or the fundamental question: What is an ed education technologist? So did they manage to find a description in her contract or? Yeah, they put the the, the points, so <laughs> it's still it's still something floating up there. Uh, we are actually waiting for the uh, uh, minister with, uh, and they will give out this job description, and we had we had this job uh, uh, the contract. Really, from but, from the from the state? Uh, there will is, be some kind of like uh, not they issue some maybe not ministry, but. Uh, 
Uh, so we have to write ourselves, the schools have to write ourselves this uh, job description. So I ha had to write it for myself, but I got some like lead thoughts from the some <coughs> documents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is actually a suggestive uh, job yes. description from the uh, Educational Technology so Society. Of Society, yes. 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 Uh, yeah, because speaking of which, speaking of which, uh, Alban, can you imagine yeah. that in Estonia there is even an association or a union? I don't know. It's 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 called elite, I think, in uh, in Estonian, which is uh, composed of educational technologists. So when you are an educational technologist, you can uh, belong Join. to that to that uh, to that union or association. I don't know how how you translate because union sounds a little bit weird. Is it a union? No, it's association. We actually meet also in the Tartu Educational Technologies. We meet with each other also. Ah, you meet, you meet. You yes. Meet. You know, to be honest, I try to contact them several times. Yes. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm Italian, maybe because they know me, I don't know. But it's been impossible to get in touch with them. So I send emails. I actually sent an email like a month ago. No, two months Who ago. Who do you for... send the email to? Uh, I cannot mention the name. I will. I send I will... you the contact. I send you the right, right <clears throat> contact. Okay? okay, thank you. Because you know, I don't know. I mean, I I write because I'm also part of the mailing list, yeah. so I get I I, I receive ah. emails. <clears throat> also about events, they also have a summer school or a spring yes. school, which is in Estonian, by the way. So unfortunately, and I don't know. It seems that just because I'm using English, but I but but. But I'm sure that even when I use Estonian or my kind of Estonia, they wouldn't reply. But anyway, Elokai, we have to catch up, by the way. So yes. I will I will ask you separately because we're still recording. And there are also witnesses that can sue me uh, in case I say something that... No, don't laugh, yet because it's true. It's actually true. I mean, I don't want to be sued. I don't want to end up in jail. This is my life goal. <laughs> okay, but uh, uh, thank you, Aban. Do you do you have a follow up question or? I think you answered my follow up question about uh, you, the association and the support uh, the you brought it to myself. No, but the... I just uh, yeah. yeah yeah go ahead. Uh, I looked up Tiger Leap. Tiger Leap, yes. I googled it, and uh, from Tiger Leap, I added with Tiger Defense. So that project, uh, okay. there was something pro. So NATO a... and military defense, they had... Yeah, it's something different. So, yeah, but the idea came from there, so... It ah, developed... yeah, yeah, could be. <clears throat> something no, way fast. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And just imagining how far Estonia is in this regard, which yeah, well, is good. You had you had the chance to, to, to have an idea, to have an idea. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course, the teachers who are present now are highly selected. Uh, so that they might not actually represent the whole population, but you see more. Appreciate, appreciate it, appreciate it. Thank very you. Very good. I'm very happy. Okay, so this is it. It's Friday, Friday evening for me, for you too, for you too, Tom. It's you no know, for you, Tom. It's still four o'clock, so you still have way to go. Four o'clock. We still Only have daylight outside. Yes, yes. You <laughs> see, <laughs> the sun didn't go down at three fifty. You see, yeah, yeah. Whereas here now it's almost three, um, three, yeah, three fifty, yeah, three fifty. Okay, but thank you very much. This is it. This this is also the last uh, uh, meeting uh, for the autumn school. We we have already discussed what I expect from you from next uh, from next uh, week. But uh, I will I will send you an email again about the presentation, uh, the final presentation. This is it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Elokai. Thank you, Trino. It was a pleasure to see you again, especially Ashley and Elokai. And, uh, and uh, let's hope to, to meet again, I mean, to do this again in another context. It's always a pleasure. Thank you Good very to much. See you. Thank you for inviting Thank me. You. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice, Have a nice Bye. weekend. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat>